Let's go through some client onboarding software to help you streamline this process in your business. Now, client onboarding varies from industry to industry, but generally the goal is kind of the same. It's get your client to answer some questions, maybe complete some tasks and potentially send you some files as well. So that's what I'm gonna try and focus on uh, in this video. The most common way everyone onboards clients is with email. This is a logical tool to use. One, because everyone is just familiar with email, right? But you're probably here because you've realized how much this sucks as a uh, client onboarding system. The usual story is you'll send an email to a client asking for them to send you some information, maybe answer some questions, attach files, and they'll send you 20 emails if they reply at all. Uh, one attachment per email. Uh, they'll have inline uh, answers in different colors and it just becomes a massive pain to track. If you do really want to use email, here are some tips on how to do it better. Just lay it out really clearly. Give them numbered dot points. I need you to do this. I need you to attach this file here. I need you to go over to the system and do something else. I need you to answer this question and this question and this question in line, right? You don't want to leave anything up to the imagination uh, during any client onboarding process and especially with email when it's so easy for the client to mess up. And um, if you do need large files, obviously make one of those steps a link to a folder or something for them to go and upload to. The next option are spreadsheets and I'm specifically talking about online spreadsheets, uh, not something you're gonna pass back and forth as an attachment, so something like Google Sheets or an online version of 365. So if you have a nicely laid out spreadsheet with columns for uh, the questions or the things you need from clients, like a checklist and a place for them to answer them. Uh, if you need files in that case, you're gonna to have to provide a link for them to go to somewhere else and upload and then just sort of put a yes or something in the box. You can put a checkbox within a spreadsheet uh, for them to tick off. So that can be much easier, right? They've got a really clear spreadsheet for them to go through. They auto save, like that's the key here. You really don't want them to have to save a spreadsheet and, and send it back. So auto saving is really nice, quite flexible because you can add and remove questions. You know, if you've got specific questions for the, every client, like maybe you've got a standard set that you send to everyone and then a block of questions at the end that are uh, bespoke for each client, you can easily do that before you send the spreadsheet. So a few tips, again, make sure it's really clear. I would use nice formatted almost like heading cells. So like breaking the questions down into chunks. So you've got like a nice bold uh, heading uh, before each section of questions that you need and a really clear way for them to see what they have done and what is still outstanding. Some of the downsides of doing it this way is that, you know, they might need a Microsoft or a Google account to actually access that sheet. It depends on your setup. Um, files have to be done separately, you know, using whether it's Google Drive or Dropbox or something else. Um, any questions that are multi-line or require formatting can be quite painful. It is possible to to uh, have a cell expand and wrap text in it to have a, like a large area for them to type in. But sometimes the client actually has to know how that works. And if you are relying on client knowledge during this process, it's going to be a mess because there will be some clients who will always find a way to mess it up. So you've got to be mindful of that. And on that, uh, because a spreadsheet is so open and flexible, the client can do whatever they want. They can answer wherever they want. They can stick information wherever they want. They could delete questions. You know, they've got that uh, capability when you're using a spreadsheet. So that's something also to be mindful of. The next most common thing I see are using forms tools. So plenty out there. I'm not gonna go through them all, things like uh, Jotform or Tally or Fillout. There's lots of these out there. The benefit of a form is that you can really lock in what you need from the client. You can say, I want text here. I want a number here. I want this to be a file upload, presuming the tool you're using allows file uploads. So just check that when you're looking for a forms tool. But being able to highly control the inputs is actually kind of a good thing, again, because you don't want too much flexibility in that they can just go and start adding and removing and putting whatever information they want in. So forms really allow you to lock that down. But of course, like most tools, there are limitations. So one of the biggest ones with forms tools is that uh, the work is generally lost when the client closes the window. Some forms tools have the ability to save and continue later, but from experience, this is generally not great because if the client has to take an action to save something, 
they're gonna mess it up. They will forget to do it and then they'll close the window and then all the work's lost and they might be mad, they might be frustrated. This is just not an experience you want, right? Um, some forms tools will save it uh, within the browser automatically, but then if they try to fill this out later on another device, it's not gonna work, right? All that, all that information is gonna be gone. Forms are generally difficult to customize for any individual client. So if you do have bespoke questions, you have to create a new form every time, which can be a bit of a pain. If they answer a question incorrectly, there's no real way to push back on that. Like with spreadsheets and email, you might just reply uh, or put a comment in a spreadsheet. But with a form, you've got that snapshot of all the answers they gave you as a snapshot, right? You can't go and edit it generally. You would have to go back to them and say, hey, like question five, you sent me the wrong thing. We need something else. So you're back to email. So you can have that issue. Um, and of course, like once you send them the form, you still have to manually remind them to complete it, which is why I'm now going to introduce Content Snare. Now full disclosure, this is our product, but we built it because we had so many issues with client onboarding in our agency. So uh, we've essentially combined the best of a lot of these different products into one tool that's made for getting information from clients on time without having to chase them. It's an incredibly easy to use portal. It doesn't require any training or learning. They don't need an account to get in. They just click a link in an email or an SMS. They drop straight into the portal. They can answer questions. They can upload files. If they forget to do something, it's gonna automatically remind them at periods defined by you. Like a forms tool, you can choose what kind of data you want them to give you. So if it's a number or a checkbox or select something from a list or type something in, it's all there. So you can really lock them in. But along with that, you can include really clear instructions on what you want them to do so they get it right the first time. And I can't stress how key this is. Everything they type in as they go through the request is saved automatically across browsers. They come back later, all their information is going to be there and nothing will be lost. And what I think is one of the coolest features is if they do upload something or answer a question incorrectly, you can push back on them by clicking this reject button, which will send them a message to say, hey, we need you to come back in and change something. So you've always got the latest version of the information rather than having to go backwards and forwards, having old copies and new copies are all in email threads. So this is one of the most popular features of the platform. If you wanna see more about this, uh, just have a look in the description below. There's a link over to a quick video showing how Content Snare works from start to finish. And you can also have a chat to our team if you want uh, a human to run you through uh, how it all works. Otherwise, just go and check out our website. I hope this was helpful. Uh, client onboarding can be such a painful process, but if you have good software to guide your clients through the process and remind them to give you that information, it can be a lot easier.